Welcome to our in-home communion. We know that scripture instructs each believer to regularly attend a local church as recorded in Hebrews 10 verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. There are rare occasions when attending is not possible. We recognize that. And that is why we offer some of our church sermons online. We also recognize that participating in communion may also be desired in such cases. For those of you who desire to participate in this home communion event, pause the video and acquire some, um, some uh, juice, a small amount of juice, any kind will do, and a piece of bread or a cracker. And then restart the video when you are ready. Before we share in remembering the sacrifice that purchased our salvation, we are to first take time to examine our life and allow the Holy Spirit to reveal any sin that may be within. The taking of Holy Communion is meant for only repentant Christian Christians participating, uh, following our own self-judgment as explained by Paul in 1 Corinthians 11.27. 1 Corinthians 11.27. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the blood, the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Verse 29. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many are dead. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. To take communion with unconfessed sin abiding within is to disregard and disrespect the value of Christ's work upon the cross that frees us from our sins. We are to examine ourselves because to neglect doing so becomes judgment upon ourselves. The weak, the sick, and the dead that Paul lists are a result of unconfessed sin, separating one from the healing provision that is supplied by the sacrifice of Christ upon the cross. The sin in one's life prohibits the provisions of the cross and result and the results are not desired. These verses do not say that all illness is rooted in sin and we know that is not the case. So before we continue we will spend about one minute allowing for a time of silent self-examination and self-confession of your sins to God. Let us now bow our head and allow the Holy Spirit to assist us. Pray and confess any sins at this time.
Amen. Let us now share in Holy Communion. Communion. As we participate in Holy Communion, today we will read the following biblical account as recorded in the book of Luke, for, uh, chapter 22, beginning with verse 7. So Luke 22, beginning with verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat. And they said to him, Where do you want us to prepare? And he said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house which he enters. Verse 11. Then you shall say to the master of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished upper room. There make ready. So they went and found it just as he had said to them. And they prepared the Passover. When the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. So we see here that Jesus sat in fellowship with his disciples just prior to the Passover celebration. Communion is a time of fellowship, a time of bonding between God and believer. For we are unified with him through Christ's suffering and shed blood in which we remember during Holy Communion. Communion is also a time of fellowship and bonding between members of the body of Christ. We are united together with each other because of our common identity in Christ. Verse 15, Then Jesus said to them, With fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Now, the Passover tradition and symbolism pointed to the day when the Messiah would come from heaven and become that perfect sacrifice on behalf of humanity to defeat the sins of humanity. Let us pause now and pray. Father, Heavenly Father, thanks for communion and its elements. For what it represents, may your blessing be upon this communion service. In Jesus' name we do ask. Amen. Verse 17. Then Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Jesus spoke of the juice to be shared in communion. Common union, one with another. And so the fruit of the vine is shared between us, recognizing that Jesus himself is the true vine, of which we, in a few moments, will drink in common unity of faith. Together, we are one with Christ. Concerning the bread.
please wait until instructed to eat it. The bread that Jesus gave to his disciples that day was broken and torn, but not cut. Broken and torn, but not cut. Even as the body of Christ was torn from beating and whip for the sake of our physical and mental well-being. When we partake of the bread, if you have need for healing, realize that he suffered so that you can believe and be healed even as you eat. And may any damaged relationships concerning you amongst your brethren or family members, may they also be healed as needed. Verse 19. And our Lord took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. So let us remember the sufferings of our Lord on our behalf. You may now eat of the bread in remembrance. The cup. The cup represents the blood of Jesus that was shed on our behalf. His blood not only makes it possible for humanity to be forgiven of sins and unified together with him but it also is our link to fellowship and common union with all believers in Christ verse 20 likewise our Lord also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you We drink of the cup in remembrance of His blood which purchased your forgiveness from sin and unifies your fellowship with both God and other believers, all believers. You may now drink of the cup in remembrance. Let us close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for providing communion as a means to remind us of your sacrifice and love. Thank you for this time of sharing communion, common union with you and my brothers and sisters in Christ. I ask your blessing now upon them, your peace over them, your comfort with them, and your guidance before them. In Jesus' great name we do ask and thank you. Amen and amen. I am glad to have been able to share this communion with you.